Hello, everybody. How are you? Happy New Year. And uh, welcome to Coffee and Connections with the Chief. I'm Chief Dean Rondeau of the Wolf Road Police Department. And uh, I'm at uh, one of my favorite venues. And uh, you can see it's snowing behind us. Uh, the winter is definitely here. And uh, this is another segment of uh, Coffee and Connections uh, with the Chief. And to my left is uh, Captain Mark Livy. He's going to talk a little bit about operations going into the new year. And uh, so I have just a couple of topics that I want to mention. Uh, we're still, uh, in terms of the police department, we're still uh, in the budget process. We're still working our way through the budget process. Um, in February, I believe it is the second Tuesday of the month, that would be 8 February, I believe we have the town's deliberative session. Uh, so that's the next big item on the, uh, the budgetary uh, schedule. Uh, we have some uh, selectmen's meetings coming up, uh, talk about uh, various budget items and, and uh, warrant articles, and we have a meeting with the budget committee coming up uh, where that will be the final review of the budget. So all of those things are, are forthcoming. Uh, so again, a lot, of, a lot of work, a lot of hard work going into this very tight budget this year, but I'm, I'm excited about the budget. If our budget uh, goes through, uh, and, it, and it should, I'm not anticipating any major issues, um, it's, I think, setting us up quite nicely uh, for success moving into the new uh, fiscal year. And it is a tight budget, but I think it's a very good budget. Wouldn't you agree, Captain? Yeah, I, I, I totally agree with you um, on that with our budget. Um, there's nothing... Um, other than the increases that you do see in our budget, which is online, um, is mostly contracts, union contracts that are already been approved by the um, by the selectmen and um, town voted. Um, they're in their final year of their contract. 2022 was their fourth and final year of it, so they'll be um, starting that process up this year and going from there so but other than that i mean our budget is pretty um it's tight it's tight i mean there's some ups in like overtime which um is i believe is going to be funded properly and and um we did the five-year average on all broke it down as you'll see online on how we spend it um and our overtime um, I think that's probably our biggest increase is for the officer side is for the overtime. I mean, we just, there's a lot of investigations, holiday pay, training, uh, grants, and they, they all go into that. So we want to be budgeted for that. So I'm excited about that. And, and again, our, uh, the total increase of the police department budget was, was, re, was very modest. It was a, it was a modest increase. Um, and uh, so I, again, I think it's a very tight budget. Um, so winter is here, as I said. You can see behind me it's snowing out right now, and uh, we're going to start seeing winter storms now probably about every 10 to 14 days. Uh, typically, the, the weather pattern works, you know, somewhere between Thursday and Friday. Every 10 to 14 days, you can expect some sort of nor'easter uh, or a Yankee Clipper system to move in. That's just traditionally how it works. Uh, the captain will tell you I am a, a weather aficionado, so uh, I follow weather patterns and I like enjoy the physics behind it and try and figure out what, what's going to happen locally. Uh, so I'm not a professional. I am an amateur weather enthusiast. So, But that's typically uh, the, the conclusions that I've drawn over the number of years of studying the weather here in, uh, in Wolfboro, New Hampshire. Um, so having said that, uh, again, if you look out at the lake, and I'm looking at the lake right now, um, it's not frozen. And it's reasonably, when you think about it, even though we've had a few cold days, it's been reasonably uh, a mild winter so far. The lake is still not frozen. There's plenty of open water out there. So that, that, that presents two hazards, right? First is, is exceedingly cold water. And the second is thin ice. So with cold water, water, and I suspect that that lake water is somewhere between 36 and 38 degrees right now. Let me tell you something. If you end up in that water right now, uh, there's a strong likelihood you're going you're gonna to hyperventilate. It is going to be very painful. Uh, believe me, I, I have a lot of experience in the military with cold water operations, and it is paralyzing uh, when you hit that cold water. So you have to be really careful when you're out and about uh, near the water. 
um, you need to obviously take precautions and let people know where you're going. Make sure you have all the the applicable cold weather suits and, and uh, personal flotation devices and everything else. Secondly, uh, make sure that if, if uh, once, once you do believe that the ice is frozen over, check with Fish and Game. Call their headquarters. Get the ice thickness of where you're going to be. Uh, it doesn't take a lot uh, to go through the ice, especially if you hit a, a pressure ridge in that lake with a snowmobile or a four-wheeler. You're going to go right through, and that water is going to be very, very cold. It's going to be paralyzing. So please, your personal safety is very important to me. Let's not put yourself in jeopardy. Let's not put uh, uh, first responders in jeopardy. Uh, let's just exercise uh, some, some restraint and some critical thinking before we do any operations in and around the water because it can be very dangerous. Listen, I'm a very good swimmer. I've been swimming my entire life, and, and I'm also a scuba diver, rescue diver, and dive master. I'm here to tell you, cold water is not your friend. All right, and, and it's very, cold water has a tendency to be very dense, and any diver will tell you that you'll see the thermocline between the warm water and the cold water, and in the wintertime, that thermocline moves up. And why is that important? Because when you hit that thermocline, the water is much denser. You sink a lot faster. So th therein, therein lies uh, one of the issues in dealing with cold water. So uh, the other thing we've got coming up, the other big holiday we've got coming up, we've already had uh, New Year's uh, Eve and, and New Year's Day, uh, specifically on the 1st. We've got on the 17th uh, Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday. And, uh, you know, some people celebrate that as Civil Rights Day. Uh, but here in New Hampshire, we recognize it as Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday. Um, that will be a day off. The kids will be out. Uh, that is a Monday. They'll be enjoying a, a day off from school, so be careful. Uh, the kids will be out sledding and, and playing and doing all the things that kids do. So just leave a little bit uh, of time. If, if you don't have the day off, that's unfortunate. But to leave a little bit of time uh, going to and from your, your daily chores and and work and so forth and so on because uh, you know you could uh, you could run into some traffic congestion. Uh, beyond that, I, as always, uh, the weather here in New England is is unpredictable. I want you to keep an eye on the weather. Make sure you know uh, what what is forecast today. Obviously, as you can see, it's snowing behind me, and today the weather uh, is a little making the roads a little slippery and a little slick. You need to pay attention to that. And again, just go slow. One other thing, if your vehicle is equipped with four-wheel drive or all-wheel drive and you're trying to climb a hill, go ahead and put the vehicle in four-wheel drive or all-wheel drive to give you a little bit better traction in the slippery, snowy weather. I know there are some old schoolers out there that still think, well, I'm only going to put the four-wheel drive if I absolutely, trust me, you need it. You need it. Don't, don't be trying to muscle your way up Old Perk or Brickyard Hill. Uh, in two-wheel drive, and you're sliding across the yellow line and into oncoming traffic. That's a bad. That's a bad visual right there. So, so put your vehicle in four-wheel drive, and you can take it out when you get to the top of the hill, or if the road is clear, or what have you. Uh, but put it in four-wheel drive. Put it in all-wheel drive. You're not going to ruin anything. You know, it's it's 2022. We we've had that technology for quite a while. Uh, so go ahead and utilize it to your advantage, and keep yourself safe. Beyond that, I want to welcome you to another uh, beautiful, what's going to be another beautiful year here in uh, Wolfboro, New Hampshire. We live in a very beautiful and bucolic area. I want you to enjoy yourselves. We're very safe up here. You have a very talented uh, police department. Uh, we're certainly very capable. And, uh, but at the same time, I want you to be safe, and you need to take some personal responsibility and make yourself safe, right? And so along... Along those lines, you know, you lock your doors at night. You, you don't leave your, your vehicles uh, unlocked. Uh, you know, a few months ago, we had a vehicle theft ring. Um, they have fortunately been identified and police stopped. Uh, that was a joint investigation with your, your, your local municipal, county, state, and federal authorities. And those individuals have all, all been arrested. So that's a good thing. But still, people like that are still out there. Uh, and there will be another group that would want to fill the vacuum, right? As my good friend Chief Shigori says over in Tufton Borough, nature adores a vacuum. So there will be other groups like that. So don't make yourself a victim. Make sure you lock your doors. 
Don't leave anything in your vehicles that you that you're not willing to do without. Lock your cars. Lock your cars when you're in, in when, when you're home in your driveway, and and just change habits. Right. It takes two weeks to change a habit, so go ahead and do that. Just make yourself a little bit safer. Keep honest people honest. Beyond that, I think 2022 is going to be a wonderful year. Um, you know, hopefully the the COVID nine uh, pandemic will settle down and 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 go the way of the Spanish influenza. Uh, if you remember, that was about a two year ordeal. Uh, in some parts of the country, maybe about two and a half years, but we got through it. And uh, we got through it because we're Americans and we're tough and we come together and, and we can beat this thing. So let's do all the things that have been making us safe, right? And, and yes, you know, if you're so inclined, go ahead and get the, get the shot, get the booster. You know, wear your masks when you're required to do so. Wash your hands. Practice good social distancing. And, and uh, you know, just be mindful that there, there is a virus out there and, and you have to protect yourself and do all the things uh, that, that uh, you need to do to protect yourself. And that means if you're not feeling well, if you're feeling ill or you think you have some of the signs and symptoms of the coronavirus, then seek medical attention as quickly as possible. Take a home test or go get a PCR test. But, but self-isolate until you find out one way or the other. It's either uh, COVID-19 or it's not. Um, that's the best advice I can give you. But together, working together, we're going to beat this thing. Uh, now I'm going to turn it over to my captain for an operational update. And again, thank you very much for watching Coffee and Connections. Thanks, Chief. Um, so I'm going to start off uh, as we get into the January here as what just finished was the, uh, the Christmas fund. Um, as just finished and I believe we had about 87 families in the Christmas fund which is a lot of families uh, there's a lot of um, a lot of I mean a process to this whole thing and I just want to give credit where credit is due is uh, supervisor Mia Lyons who runs this who pretty much does this almost all, all by herself I know her daughter helped her tremendously this year um, organizing uh, the the gifts, putting them in bags, getting them ready. She's got an unbelievable system um, that's remarkable, and, and she does this every year, and uh, every year it's a success. So um, I just want to give credit where credit's due. She's doing an unbelievable job there. She still has to do her other duties, which is supervising um, dispatch in that area, but she manages all this and all that Christmas fund. It's just it's remarkable every year to watch it and to see it and to see it all come in and to see everybody get their um, uh, bags of gifts and uh, for the families that are really who need it. Um, so just well done. Um, great job. Just outstanding. I, I can't praise that enough. It's just, it's just a great job. So um, going into our operation January, it's an exciting time for the officers as we have a position that's open, a corporal position. Um, because of last year, Corporal Jason Boucher retired after 20 so years of law enforcement with us. But we didn't, we didn't lose him. We grabbed him and took him back as a part-time. So he's going to be, he's our juvenile service and evidence manager um, in our PD. So this is, it's just works out great when you can actually pull somebody back that has all that um, experience, knowledge, and, and to still help our young that are still, because we have a lot of new officers. I mean, they're, only, they're under five years with us, is, there's a good amount of officers that are there. So keeping this experience and knowledge of law enforcement within our community, in our department, is just, it's what you really would like to do. And to have them in the juvenile services to understand it and working with our prosecutor, Tim Morgan, and our evidence being the new evidence manager and taking over for our staff sergeant maloney to relieve him of those duties to work on something else is it's just it's it, we're getting larger we're getting busier so these little duties are becoming um administrative duties are coming hard to do in being out on the road and dealing with calls so this is what he's doing right now and learning um and he's picking it up very well so the corporal's position is, is an open position. All officers are going to go through this process if they want to. Um, so sometime, I'm hoping within February, March, as um, the ORA boards come in there and the commissioners choose our next uh, corporal. And we'll get them here in our um, Coffee and Connections. So you can meet and greet, which you probably already meet and greet, but meet him as a, or she as a corporal at that time. So 
So that's exciting there. Um, operations that are going right now that will keep on going, and we're warning you, we're throwing it out there. If you're driving on North Main, you're going to see an officer, and there's, if you're speeding or using an electronic device or another violation, really good chance you're going to get pulled over. So I'm warning you, beware. Um, we're out there. North Main is a, is a high concentrated area focus right now. Um, it will be for the time coming, especially getting into summer. It's um, the neighborhood there is um, seeing a difference of us being out there. Yeah, and you're going to see Bay Street, South Main. I mean, these are all areas that are um, concerned areas where, yeah, well, I mean, you have high volume of uh, vehicle traffic. You're going to get some speeds and other violations, and we're going to be out there. So I'm throwing it out there. I'm warning you. Um, so. It, you see an officer out there, that's what he's doing, and we're trying to educate and lower the speeds out on our roadways, town and state roads. So, um, Other than that, right now, we don't really have any grants that are going right now. We're, we're still waiting for them to, we have pedestrian crosswalks, but that's for the summertime that we got approved for. We're just waiting them to, to see what came came back from last year and hopefully we'll get some additional funding for some maybe um, speed details oh, well grants I'll say they're not really details they're grants they're funds that come in from the state and paid for and maybe distractive driving which I think is a, a priority out there everyone still uses their phones and these things I mean you can connect Bluetooth there's also devices for you um, you can put them on a, a hook so you can see what's coming in there, but nothing is too important for a phone call or a text if you're out on that roadway to answer it and cross that yellow line or fog line and go off the roadway and hurt you or somebody else in that vehicle. It's just nothing is more important than that. So just wait. Get to your destination, pull over, answer the call, or wait and answer the call when you get there. So that's my advice, and I hope everyone follows that. Um, out there. So in dispatch right now, we're, we're doing very well. We're full staff. Um, nothing to really report there. We're very busy. Um, this, I'll be getting the end of the year stats for our police and dispatch once it's all finalized. That's probably sometime in March uh, when we're on this show. We'll get all that paperwork. I'll give you that, what our yearly ending stats are so everyone can see it. But other than that, that's all I got for January. Just be careful out there. When you see the snow, give yourself some extra time. Um, especially in, as you see today, uh, it builds up. There's ice. The temperature goes up and down right now. And uh, just be careful out there. So emphasizing what the captain just said, and as a technical crash reconstructionist, I will tell you it's all about coefficient of friction, right? And uh, so when you have snow and ice build up on the road, your ability to stop uh, is greatly trammeled. So the captain is right. Uh, give yourself some extra time and go slow. On an unrelated note, changing the topic, I do want to uh, dive into something that the cap captain had said. He talked about the uh, uh, Wolfboro Police Department Children's Christmas Fund, which is managed wholly out of our dispatch center and is run by dispatch supervisor Mia Lyons and she always does a fantastic job every year and this year was no exception. We had the highest number of families this year I think we've had in a while was 87 families which is tremendous. There are a lot of other programs too that are run wholly out of the dispatch center and just to name a few we have the good morning program and that's a program that was started by uh, uh, Chief Stan Stevens, uh, almost 40 years ago. Uh, it's hard to imagine it's been that long, but uh, that's a program where if you're, if you're ill or you're someone infirm or you're elderly and, and you don't call into the PD, you sign up for the program, you call in every morning at your leisure. If we don't hear from you, we go out and check and make sure everything is okay. Um, that is a very popular program, and that is run completely out of the dispatch center. Uh, the dispatchers take a lot of interest in that program. They, they, uh, they, 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 they certainly dispatch officers uh, when they don't hear from uh, their, their, uh, their clients in that program, and they, and they take a lot of interest in that. 
Uh, the, another program is the cyanobacteria notification uh, program uh, where we take calls from the public if they identify cyanobacteria and then we, we, we look to get that uh, area tested or the situation remediated or what, what have you. But uh, that's another program uh, that was established a couple of years ago in light of the cyanobacteria blooms that we started seeing principally down off of uh, Cary Beach area but in some other areas in and around uh, the Winter Harbor uh, and, and so forth. So there are a number of programs that are run completely out of the Wolfboro Dispatch Center. These are really the unsung heroes of the Wolfboro Police Department. They keep the front doors open. Um, they are there. If you have an emergency, you come right in and they get an officer to you immediately. Remember, most of my officers, because we are a small police department, most of my officers, if not all of my officers, are out on the road patrolling. So they're not necessarily always at the station. In fact, very rarely will an officer be at the station. If they're at the station, they're only there because they've got an arrested subject, they're logging or tagging evidence, or they're completing a report or speaking to a supervisor, and that's it. Um, so the people that, that man the PD and keep the front doors open uh, and, and keep the Wolfboro PD as a place of refuge, safety, and security uh, for anyone who may need it, are our Wolfboro dispatchers so big uh, you know big big hand wave big high five to them uh, they are the unsung heroes they are the first people you're going to speak to if you have an emergency and they take their jobs very seriously uh, so again uh, they are uh, uh, the key to victory in our ability to provide uh, public safety to the town of Wolfboro a good friend of mine and and former selectman you know Paul O'Brien uh, would, would basically say, you know, clean, safe, family friendly, right? Those are the, the three things that we want basically from town government. We want a clean, we want a clean, clean town, right? So that, that speaks to all the things we do to make sure that the streets are well maintained, that the, the uh, public works department is out there, you know, maintaining the roads, maintaining the streets, running the transfer station, all those things that public works are responsible for. Safe, safety, right, public safety, so police, fire, EMS, and family friendly, right? You know, a, a town that's, that's, that's putting forth those good uh, values and, and making things available to the community, uh, like our very talented Parks and Recs Department. So we have a really good team. We have really good uh, department heads. I can't speak highly enough about these people we have a good town administration and and I think we really got it going on here uh, so uh, all those things are, are, are critically important and the key to victory with the Wolf World Police Department and the reason that you have a very effective police department is because of central dispatch and 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 hear it for me uh, there is no mystery there. They are the linchpin that keeps the, the operation moving in the right direction, and they are the ones that get assistance and help, whether it's police, fire, EMS, to you immediately. So, so thank you very much, and big, uh, you know, big high five to Mia Lyons and the team, the seven dispatchers that we have working there, 24-7, 365. 24-7, 365. They are there day and night, wide awake, ready to, to take your calls. And they do it holidays, they do it with a smile on their face. Uh, they'll do it during multiple fire calls and multiple police incidents. And they're there and they, they know their job and they know it well, they, they really do. And I'll tell you right now, high stress job, I could not do that job. I could not do it, it is a high stress job. Thank you very much for tuning in to Coffee and Connections with the Chief. We'll see you back in February for another segment of Coffee and Connections with the Chief. And uh, for, for myself and Captain Mark Livy, thank you very much for tuning in. Happy New Year. And uh, 2022 is going to be a fantastic year. Thanks again, folks. Be safe out there. Bye-bye. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Coffee and Connections with the Chief. I'm Chief Dean Rondo. We've been joined uh, unexpectedly today, but uh, always welcome. Uh, is a good friend of mine and, and uh, selectman for the town of Wolfboro, uh, Luke Friedenberg. Luke, welcome to the show. Thank you, Chief. It's a pleasure to be here. I've known Luke now going on 26 years. And just let me say one thing. Uh, there, there is a, uh, not a better 
man that you can have in town government and Luke. I can tell you right now that Luke cares passionately about government and governance. Uh, this is not the first time he's been a selectman. Uh, he's done a fantastic job as a uh, selectman, and uh, I'm, uh, I'm really happy that you're on the show, Luke, and, and I hope I'm not embarrassing you when I say this, but I, I do believe in giving credit where credit is due. And uh, Luke is a very hardworking uh, businessman in town as well as selectman, and I know he cares passionately about a lot of the same issues that I care about. So with that, Luke, thank you for being on the show, and I'm going to turn it over to you, sir. Well, thank you, and those, those are very, very kind words uh, coming from you. Uh, I think I was a senior in high school, your first couple of years coming on. Uh, and, you know, it, it, it goes to be said, I mean, we both kind of grew up in this area in the sense with your career and uh, me growing up here and going to high school here and uh, eventually coming back and starting a business and uh, now we're working together again. Uh, so let's, I, I appreciate all the, the kind comments, but I'm going to still dive into some really tough issues here for you. So we're going to hit the ground running here. Uh, I was at a, a recent uh, police commission meeting and uh, an older lady, probably in her early 90s, Claire Nash, Claire Nash uh, came in and presented the uh, police uh, force and the, uh, the fire chief with uh, some quilts. And obviously we want to get your input on it, but I, was, I, I think that goes to exactly what Wolfboro is and how close of a community it is. It was really heartwarming for her, obviously. Uh, she spent a lot of time making those uh, and had, obviously, you, you went mind. And I think that go, you know, I think I said this at the meeting, I think it goes to a large extent to what kind of town we are, but, uh, you know, not to, not to, you know, every chief has their own style. And, you know, I, I see you out in the community a lot. I mean, you're doing things like this, you're on the radio. You walk the streets in the summertime. Uh, it's it's pretty incredible. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. So, uh, you know, it's a. I think it goes to I think it goes to our small town, and I think it goes to what we care and what we value. I I, uh, I, I th and thank you for those kind words. Uh, obviously, uh, with Miss Nash, I'll, I'll talk about Miss Nash. She's 97 years old, and she turns out an Afghan every five days. And in the wintertime, I can't think of a better gift than the gift of warmth. And uh, she's 97 years old. She came to our commission meeting, and uh, this was an unexpected joy to have her there. And it was really heartwarming, and it, it absolutely was. And she donated a uh, pile, a plethora of uh, Afghans to uh, the police and fire departments, which were uh, warmly received, no pun intended, or perhaps pun intended. Uh, so that's, uh, that's fantastic. As another selectman once pointed out, uh, Paul O'Brien, we, we, the Wolfboro PD, uh, have been the recipient of, uh, in, in last year, 2021, we were the recipient of a donation of a Tesla. We were the recipient of a donation of an electric bike from Coyote Creek down in Rochester. The Tesla was donated, and I still don't know who donated that. That was an anonymous donor, and, and, and that, needed to be, that needed to remain, for my purposes, anonymous. I don't want to know who it is for a whole bunch of different reasons. But, but those are really, you're right, those are, those are, are great donations to the PD. And, uh, and, and I think it, it speaks to the folks that are, are uh, want to see the, the continued success of the Wolfboro Police Department. We have a lot of folks that donate to the uh, uh, Children's Christmas Fund, which is run out of the dispatch center. Now, that is a registered, uh, with the Attorney General's office, a, uh, a, a uh, what do they call that? A, a, uh, I know it's, a, it's, it's uh, you can write it off your taxes. It's a charitable fund, and it is registered with the Attorney General's office, and we do submit our financials to them, so I just want to let people know that that is available for a tax deduction if you're interested in that, and uh, or or donating. But the, again, that is uh, it speaks to the, the 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 caring community that we have in Wolfboro, and, and thank you for bringing that that out. I, I I'm going to jump right into this because you brought up the Tesla, and I think you know that it's 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 something that people see now. It's out there. We took delivery of it sometime midsummer. You know. Uh, 
are we already seeing a, you know cost savings with that? Is it? A yeah, we, we are. That's a, g a great question. Thank you for bringing that up. So the captain, that went to the captain, and captain is in charge of my, essentially he runs the operations and frees me up to do some of the, uh, you know, the, the deeper strategic thinking and planning that is required of a chief of police. The, uh, I want to say that, uh, so we, we do have a meter uh, that's been installed at the PD so we can track how much we're spending, and the captain's sitting right over here. Not that we're going to turn the camera, but uh, Captain, correct me, uh, I believe $77 a month to run that Tesla? No. Okay. Uh, let, me, let me give you the exact figure. So we um, did some formulas on it, and for the five months that I had it when I gave this presentation for the Budget Committee um, in December, I used about 2,500 miles. And the average kilowatts of a Tesla Model Y by the government was about 27. So with our meter, we're doing a little bit better at 24 uh, kilowatts um, for 100 miles. So and with our electric uh, rate in this town, which is very low, um, we're doing about $77 for the five months. So. So $77 for five months to run a vehicle, and the savings in gasoline is huge. The other thing that we, we started doing, uh, and I, I know you're aware of this uh, because you were in on the planning for it, we, we started uh, transitioning out of a pure gasoline engine over to the Ford uh, hybrid model uh, Explorers, which is a, is a gasoline electric engine, and that is self-generating, so that vehicle does not get plugged in. Um, it charges itself, um, and then when at, at points of time during low, uh, low idle, it will transition over to electric. We are seeing, uh, the manufacturer says about a 30% cost savings. Um, still a little too early to tell exactly what we're gonna see, but I was able to reduce this year on the budget, in the fiscal year 2022 budget, 200 gallons of fuel off of what we normally order for fuel, which is about 1,000 gallons a year. So um, now, interestingly enough, you know, in, in 2021, I only had a budget $1.87 for gasoline. This year, I had a budget 255 So if you want to know what we saved the town because for money we didn't have to ask for, you take that 200 gallons that I reduced our operating uh, cost by, and then multiply that by 2.55, and, and that'll be essentially the, the number of, of dollars that I didn't have to ask for. So yes, and my plan is uh, we have another one that's due to rotate in to the fleet, actually, hopefully within a few weeks. Um, they're taking about 10 months to, to get the vehicles in to the fleet once they're ordered. Um, so thank you very much. Yeah, that was a great question. And plus, we were also able to save, you know, because someone donated that vehicle. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it pushed the whole, it pushed everything forward. So we didn't need to go out and, you know, get another vehicle this year, which is a huge savings to the town. I mean, I mean, that that that's that you know, once again, that you know, that donor, you know, that's a huge addition to the town. It's a it's a really good step forward for energy efficiency, and you know, the town's continuously trying to. You know, being innovative. You know, we're putting EV chargers down at the uh, uh, behind the railroad, the new railroad museum. Uh, that's going to be a great resource for people coming to town that have electric cars. They'll be able to plug in in town. You know, there's chargers at the Wolfboro Inn, but you know, it's it, it, it you know things like this bring people to town, right? And and which is what we want. We want especially. Listen, let's face it, right? We are a tourist community. Okay, and if you didn't know that, you're, you're living in a tourist community. So in the summertime, we want our business community to do well, and we, we, we want people to come to Wolfboro, and anything we can do to bring people into Wolfboro uh, to enjoy the bucolic area that we have here, you know, visit our various shops and microbreweries and so forth and so on that we have, anything we do along those lines I think is always beneficial, and it's just going to bring more it's going to bring more money and more revenue into the town, and we all benefit. We all benefit from that because they're spending money in our on our businesses, and they're and they're, they're they're buying things, and then they're seeing, oh, hey, there's there's this company here, and there's that company here, and hey, if I need to do business, I can always call this company. So, these types of connections are really really important, and and I can't um, I can't emphasize that enough. We have a very strong chamber of commerce, and we get along, and we work very well 
with uh, Mary DeVries and her very talented team down there at the Chamber of Commerce. And Mary and I, uh, you know, we talk every every few months about op upcoming operations that they're doing, and we want to be a good partner, good neighbor with them. So, um, you know, I think we're very fortunate here, and this is a great place to be living, and I'm looking forward to 2022. I, and I think, you know, the, the, the tourist, you know, we are a tourist community. I mean, it's a tourist-driven community. Uh, and you know our population jumps from, and we know we have a new, we, we know we have some new population in Wolfboro since COVID. Uh, people are spending more time here. They're spending more time at their summer houses. They're, we've had people convert to year-round residents. All really good things for Wolfboro, uh, but it also puts a strain on resources and stuff like that. With that said, you know this year with the budget, you know the board of selectmen, the town manager, you know came to the department heads and said we got we got to really hold the line here. And uh, there was also a new format for the department heads to work through. And I think so far, you know, going through, going through the Board of Selectmen, things have gone very smoothly this year. You know, I, I know people are going to say, well, there's going to be an increase, you know, still even though it says zero. Well, there's a lot of things in, in town government that we can't control. And those, you know, those, those are, you know, those are, those are pensions. It is, uh, it's health insurance. You know, it's uh, there's line items, social security line items. We just can't control. Uh, so when you see a minor increase, you know, realize that, you know, and the chief can talk to this, but the amount of hours and time that goes into making that budget sound and fiscally responsible, it, it, it's a, it's a long process. It starts back in, you know, September or August, and it, you know, it goes all the way through to the deliberative session, which you know will be in February. It will be a great opportunity for members of the public to come and uh, ask questions and uh, you know find out what's going on and, and listen to the Warren articles that are going to be presented at that time. It's, it's just a great opportunity. It is, and those uh, those words from Luke uh, are he's absolutely correct. And and I'll tell you right now, myself and my executive officer, Captain Mark Livy, we attend every single one of the Board of Selectmen meetings. There's not one that we miss. And I will tell you right now, uh, and not just simply because Luke is sitting to my left, but it, I'm, I'm gonna tell you because it's the truth, there is no harder working board uh, in this town than the Board of Selectmen. And, and I see it, and the plethora uh, of information that they, they pile through uh, at each meeting is incredible. And these meetings, some of these meetings go well into the uh, late evening hours, <laughs> and I know because I'm there. But more importantly, more importantly, remember that in order to prepare for that meeting and talk, be able to talk intelligently at that meeting, there is an awful lot of work and reading that has to go in in the preparation. And of course, the unsung heroes behind a lot of that uh, aside from the Board of Selectmen, obviously is the town manager and, and town finance officer and, and, and their respective staffs that put those packets together and then brief the uh, principals on what the major staff issues are. And let me tell you something, that's, that's good governance, right? And, and I know that from my experience in the military and, and my experience here as a chief of police, there is an awful lot of work that goes in there. And, and I see it and I recognize it for what it is. And it's not a job that I would want. I'll be honest with you, it's not a job I would want. It's really, really hard. And it's hard, not because of necessarily the subject matter, but it's hard because there's an awful lot of critical thinking that has to go into this. And there is an awful lot of information that you have to sift through. And, and I see it, and I'm, I'm just always amazed. And, uh, but yeah, there is an awful lot of hard work that the Board of Selectmen have done. This budget, and I think the department heads uh, collectively did a really good job. Uh, you're absolutely right about the town manager. He came to us and he said, hey, we, you know, the, the, you know he, he put his guidance out. The guidance, I think, was definitely achievable. Um, and I think that was one of the reasons why we, we had such a, a good and tight uh, budget uh, going into the process this year, and I will say that I'm very excited about the Wolfboro PD budget, and I, I can't talk about any other budget other than that because I don't know any other budget as well as I know the PD's budget, but uh, I, it, it's, it appears to me that the town has a very good budget from what little I have seen. You know, and I, I think another good point, too, to be made, you know, and uh, Wolfboro is really blessed with the fact that we have Department heads, many of them that have been, you know, been here for decades. 
uh, and that are very passionate about their departments. Yep. They're very passionate about the people that are underneath them. Uh, they want to take care of them. And they have to balance that out when it comes to the budget. It's, uh, it's a tough task. And it's because they, I mean, it's because they care so much about the town. They're so vested in, in it. I mean, you have, I'm sure you have many communities, big cities and stuff, where you don't actually, you know, your, your department doesn't actually deal with, you know, the day-to-day the -day stuff or the employees. But, you know, in Wolfboro, we do. I mean, we all work together. It's a unique environment, you know, from public works to the police department to fire. It, everyone works together. It's like a cohesive, moving machine that's finely tuned at this point, and it just works really well. And people don't see that all the time. They just see what's out, you know, but all the, all the work that goes into building a budget or you know, building a community, it, it, it's huge. It's, it's a huge thing. And so I want to transition because another, another important topic, you know, you know, for the last couple of years, we've been working on this public safety building. And it's been, it's, uh, it's, it's one of the last big animals out there for us to, to really tackle and take care of, you know, the current, you know, for the general public, the current safety building, one, is not working. There's, there's, there's structural things going on there. So, it's, it's very tired. So, and it, you know, there's going to be a lot of information coming forward in the next couple months and into this coming year. But, you know, we've kind of pushed forward with the idea of, because of the finances, but the finances of renovating that building as a, as, a, as a one unit building with fire and police was gonna be way over $10 million. And it was, it was clear to the, to the Board of Selectmen, to the committee that, and the budget committee as well, that, that those numbers just aren't gonna work in Wolfboro. So we've moved, moved to more of a, a two, we're gonna keep the fire department hypothetically where they are, and a new location for the police department. Right now, we're currently talking about the old water tower site on North Main Street. It's a, it's a great spot. Uh, it's gonna let, you know, we can still have, you know, you, you don't need to have, in this day and age, you don't need to have the police and fire together. Uh, it'll free up some room. And the cost savings is, is astronomical. But do you want to speak to that a little bit? Yeah, so the, uh, so, Selectman Friedenberg is correct. Uh, the first thing is that the uh, the current public safety building uh, were, were simply out of space. Uh, building was finally constructed in uh, 1972, and uh, there are, are a number of issues, uh, both big and small, with that building. Um, so the new public safety building, uh, which has been proposed, uh, as, as uh, the selectman has set out on North Main Street. Uh, is is a good location. We'll work for the Wolf Road PD. Remember that my officers are are out patrolling. I I said earlier in the show that very rarely are our police officers at the station. They come in, they they uh, they get their shift summary uh, from the previous shift, the offgoing shift, and uh, you know attend roll call, and then they're out on the road doing what they need to do. And uh, answering calls and and if they're back at the station it's because of you know they're tagging or logging evidence or processing an arrested subject or you know printing off a crash report or, or speaking to a supervisor and then they're heading right back out on the road again um, so the, the the plan as it stands right now is to renovate uh, once the PD moves out to a new location is to renovate the existing public safety building which is by far less expensive than having to re reconstruct that building or, or tear it down and then rebuild it which uh, anytime you do that is, is is very very expensive if we do it that way we won't have to uh, look for alternate sites for our fire rescue equipment uh, I don't want to speak too much about that because that is the, the purview of the fire chief. And uh, But there's a lot of benefits into doing it the way we're doing it. Um, you know, it's always difficult when you're talking about cost because, the you, you know, we're dealing with a lot of issues right now. And, and uh, I think this, this is far less expensive than, than trying to do a 10 or $12 million project uh, on the existing location. Um, also, right now, because of inflation, if you will, uh, bond rates are very attractive. Uh, the, the the rate of the, the, the rate of interest is very low, uh, and is much better to, to I think bond this project, especially right now, than it would be uh, had we done it two years ago. Or or you know, I don't know what's going to happen, and neither do you. Uh, what's going to happen in, in another two years? So. 
I think I think this is the right time to do this project, and uh, it solves a lot of issues, and it makes us better. Yeah, I, I agree. You know, not only do I agree, but I think you know, and it, it's still it's still an ongoing it's still an ongoing process right now. So the public, you know, is encouraged. You know, there'll be there'll be public meetings. There's going to be public hearings about this. Uh, the public will certainly have their ability, their time, and the the chance to weigh in. Uh, but as we move forward, I just wanted to get it out there because I think it's important that people start talking about it, knowing about it, uh, understanding why, uh, the, why we're doing it. And it, you know, there is there, there are two there there's a couple of different reasons, but the financial reasons were, you know, it was going to be a burden, and you know we have to do this. This is one of the last big projects in the master plan uh, that has been kind of pushed off for a couple of years now. And it, it, it's, it's critical, uh, you know, police and fire are, it, it's a critical infrastructure to Wolfboro where we, it's, we're in a modern world now, policing's different, fire service is certainly different, uh, and we, the town of Wolfboro and our facilities need to be, you know, need to be able to handle that state-of-the-art equipment. You, you, you brought up, again, a lot of really good issues. He's, he's hitting all the, all the correct issues. So first of all, the master plan, right? So please understand, this wasn't, you know, one day somebody woke up and said, gee, we, we need a new police station. No, this was identified in the master plan almost 10 years ago, right? So this is part of the town's master plan. Now, if you're not familiar with that, there's a committee uh, It's made up of citizens, of fellow citizens, and they look at all of these issues and they program in this, this, this lockstep plan as to when they want to do these projects so that it doesn't become a burden to the taxpayer or, or an undue burden to the taxpayer. That's number one. So this is part of a master plan uh, that, that we, we paid for 10 years ago. We, we, you know, it was done by our own citizens, and it, it passed selectment approval, and, and we're following that plan. That plan has been working very well for us. That's number one. Number two is that uh, he hit the nail on the head again. Um, you know, standards, uh, professional standards, and best practices in fire service have changed over the years. Best practices and, and policies and procedures have changed in police science and police operations over the years. You saw it in, in 2019 and 2020, uh, in 2021, with a lot of the things that have been going on in society. You hear things like thrown out like police body cams and CALEA standards which we happen to agree with, right? We happen to agree with all those, except that there is an issue with trying to institute things like that, changes like that, when the infrastructure cannot support it. And, and, and part of that infrastructure, unfortunately or fortunately, depending on your frame of reference, is the, the police station, right? The, you know, we, we couldn't meet CALEA standards at this point. And you know what? There's a lot of police departments around the state that have the same problem, uh, which is the reason, you know, you see a lot of police stations being renovated or rebuilt. The, the town of Tilton, for example, just last year finished a multi-million dollar police station. Uh, so the, 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 these things are happening. Uh, they're happening all, not, not just in New Hampshire, but in the state of Maine as well. So uh, Selectman Friedenberg is correct that things are changing, right? And, and it's now 2022. And time marches on. So just uh, a, a final thing. I, I mean, we're getting to, it's cold out now. It is cold. You know, and you, you always have, you know, your, your chief's tip, you know. So, uh, you know, uh, the lake's starting to freeze, or it will be soon, uh, as we roll into ja end of January, I guess. Yeah. So any, any words on just public safety and moving forward into the winter? <laughs> Again, hit, hit the nail right on the head. Yeah, so one of my pet peeves, right, is, is keep yourself safe. Don't make yourself a victim, right? So when you're around the water, especially here in, in the Lakes region, boy, you, you know, you got to make sure if, if, if the body of water you're on is, is, is frozen, you got to make sure it's safe. So call Fish and Game. They're the ones that are tracking on the ice thickness and the depth. If you're trying to pull your, your, your fishing shack out onto the lake or you want to go out snowmobiling uh, or four-wheeling on the lake, that's great. Right? Those are all fun activities. Um, but you, you, uh, you want to make sure it's safe, right? Uh, this water right now is probably somewhere between 36 and 38 degrees. I will tell you from voice of experience uh, that lake water gets cold. And when you hit that water... 
it can be paralyzing. So you got to be careful. And if you're around large bodies of water, you know, make sure you're in a stable, you know, a stable vessel, and make sure you have your personal flotation devices. And if you have uh, the ability to have a dry suit or an exposure suit, you need to be wearing it because that type of stuff is is it can be you know it, it's just very dangerous and cold water as i said before is 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 awfully dense and it's 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 going to make it more difficult for you to stay afloat especially if you're wearing heavy clothing absolutely i mean we both we both been in cold water yep. uh, oh, yes, both both been divers so i yep. mean we've both been in cold water it's uh you know it's, it's uh not fun. yeah it's not fun. <laughs> uh I saw I saw the captain over there showing you a picture of uh, snow on people's roofs too. Uh, so you know, as a tip, you know, clear those roofs of snow. Uh, hazard out there on the roads as it is. So uh, I appreciate your time and having me on. I uh, I appreciate you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. This is uh, Chief Dean Rondeau uh, with uh, Selectman Luke Friedenberg, and thank you very much uh, for tuning in to Coffee and Connections with the Chief. Be safe, Happy New Year, and I will see you in February. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Coffee and Connections with the Chief. I'm Chief Dean Rondeau with the Warpro Police Department. Here's your safety tip of the month. Winter is upon us. Uh, you can see behind me, it just got through up. It's still snowing right now. So a new law uh, that came in uh, several years ago, Jessica's Law, uh, when you have snow and ice on the top of the, the roof of your vehicle, bus or truck or whatever you're driving, it's got to be cleared off, all right? It's got to be cleared off. I know that's new for a lot of people. Uh, they think that, uh, well, I'll just go down the road and the snow and the ice will fly off and, and it'll land on the road and it'll be fine. Well, unfortunately, that, that snow and ice has a tendency to blow into other people's automobiles and cause damage, break windshields, obstruct vision, and, and people get into motor vehicle crashes. So please, uh, as your safety tip of the month, you know, clean off your car. I, I do it with the police cruiser. Uh, my police cruiser is not in the garage. I, I get out. I, I have a snow broom that, that I, I brush the... Uh, the, the, the snow off with and I make sure that the the, uh, uh, the roof is is cleared off and and all my windows are cleared off so if I can do it you can do it so uh, again there's your safety tip of the month Jessica's law go ahead and follow it um, you don't want to get stopped because I, I guarantee you will be given a, a summons um, so again don't make yourself a victim take take care of that snow and uh, get it off the, the top of your vehicle Thank you very much for tuning in to Coffee and Connections with the Chief. I'm Chief Dean Rondeau. See you again next month, and Happy New Year.